Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me at Rentec Europe on a windy day here at the Nürburgring to talk about what's happening with my AMG A45S. Now I say my in inverted speech marks because last summer when AMG took the wraps off their new pocket rocket at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I announced that one was going to become a future Shmi-mobile. Now a few months later, I drove one for the first time at the home of AMG in a full back on a very wet and miserable day. It was a great drive but I said it was a little bit complicated with all of the other AMGs coming to the garage including the AMG GTR Pro that I have here today. Well I'm going to be taking this car out for a drive. It's a Rentec car with a tune also with a prototype exhaust to enjoy the sounds out of it to explain a little bit more about what's going on with this because at this point I do actually still have my deposit in. Now not only that there's something quite exciting to go and see here at Rentec. The parts for my SLS Black Series have arrived. The new headers and sports cats as part of the R1 package, so we'll go inside and check those out too. Let's have a quick look at the mods they've made to this A45, explain a bit more about what's happening with mine or maybe not mine, and then check out the SLS parts as well. I've always thought the A45S looks awesome, particularly having the Panamericana front grille, the AMG style, but this car, unlike the one I drove before, also has the optional aero kit, which means at the sides here you have the canards, or the flicks as Mercedes AMG call them, and then towards the back you have a gigantic spoiler sitting at the top of the rear hatch. Now a quick shout out has to go to Rentex number plates. My A45 and the second five like an S, very cool, and alongside that car we also have my E63, very appropriate as well for the E63 wagon. There is actually something in common between these two cars. They both have the drift mode. Now I will talk more in just a second about whether one of these will or won't become a future Schmiemobile, but let's have a very quick tour of the modifications that Rentec have made to it. Starting with the tune to the two liter turbo four cylinder, the stock A45S would be 421 horsepower, which is already quite a lot. This car is 480. It also has a torque bump from 500 newton meters up to 575. They've also given it more stopping performance thanks to new brake lines, brake fluids, and brake pads. Plus, it happens to have the new prototype exhaust system. Now the A45S has often been discussed in terms of the noise due to OPF's new regulations. It doesn't make a sound anything like the previous one, but we will hear what this sounds like in just a moment. So let me explain then a little bit more about this. A bit of a backstory, rewinding so to speak, going back to the early part of last year when I got to experience a prototype of one of these to try it out, see what it was like on the snow in Arjaplog in Sweden. Now we knew quite a bit already, we knew it was going to be very powerful, we already had the A35. This was clearly going to be a winner of a Car, lots of tech, the MBUX inside, all of that side of things. Now I was soon to take delivery of the G63, which I did just before the A45 was revealed, and of course I also had my AMG GTR, soon to be upgraded as well to the GTR Pro. What I didn't know at the time was that my AMG family might be growing out as well with the imminent arrival of the SLS AMG Black Series, plus now the AMG GTR Roadster nearly on the horizon as well. So this has kind of got in my mind to a place of thinking how does this work? Does it all make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. That's a different story. But what would I perhaps get the most use out of? Would I be able to use one of these as much as it would be worth to, let's say, to buy it, add it to the garage? This is where I started to kind of question myself a little bit. So I kept the order in and still to this day, I do have the deposit down for an A45S. I never confirmed the spec, so I never got a build slot or a delivery date. And I never also canceled it and took my deposit back. So it's kind of been in a limbo. Well, I've been going backwards and forwards, but I think as of right now, because of how much fun I've been having with the Pro, I don't really want to sell the Pro yet. And I've got the Roadster coming. I want to keep the Roadster and obviously the SLS. And I think it's a little bit crazy. I also want to keep the G63. I said before that I had intended originally to keep the G63 for about 12 months, but we're now a month after that. And I still want to keep it for plenty longer. So I don't think it really leaves space for an A45S, which is not to discredit this car in any form. It is a fantastic piece of kit. I just have quite a few kind of daily driving cars and it doesn't necessarily make sense in my garage. What we will do though, is just come round and fire this up. So I've got the key here, the full blacked out key, unlock it, step on board where we have the seats, which I find brutally firm by the way. These seats are not comfortable in the slightest. I'm just gonna say that right now. But stepping inside here, the digital displays of the MBUX start it up. And you can hear that sounds good. We will go straight into race mode as well, toggling 
the controller there on the steering wheel. I need to let it warm up just a touch before we can properly enjoy it. But you can tell that makes a pretty cool sound to begin with. And this is just the entry level tuning, if we could say. No new turbos, nothing crazy like that at this stage. Watch this space, it might be coming in the future. So I'm expecting to quite enjoy driving this car. I know from my previous outing, even though it was in driving torrential, horrible rain, it was the worst possible weather. I experienced the Formatic Plus system and how much grip it had doing a race start in almost standing water had no problems with traction. Fantastic experience. But let's go find some twisty roads then around here near the Nürburgring to see whether I'm going to regret my decision, whether I should probably go ahead with it after all. All right then, so into gear with the stalk by the steering wheel. And actually when you put it into gear, I notice it gets a touch louder as well almost instantly. Obviously at the moment we are in race mode as I'm going to squeeze out here from Rentec before we do come back by the way because I need to show you the package that has arrived which I think will be quite cool to see so we're going to head on out let us go this way for the moment just trying to decide where exactly I'm heading towards a twisty road to enjoy a little car like this but in race mode you can definitely tell it has more of a punch now one of the things that the A45S was massively heavily critiqued for when it arrived, I'm just gonna pop it down into sport, was that a lot of the sound is inside. It's all sound that you hear when you're driving, but not sound that you hear from the outside of the car. In fact, it's really quite quiet outside. And that is, of course, due to OPFs, due to regulations, due to all the boring stuff, which significantly changes how we are going to be able to use and enjoy our cars in future. In the coming years, everything that will arrive is going to be I guess a little bit disappointing compared to what's familiar to us. Driving like this though, the thing with the A45 is it's such a premium interior. The MBUX dual screens, the feel of the AMG performance steering wheel, everything about it punches so high above its weight. And this is one of the things actually that I thought about. So I did spec one up with the plus package that you get in the UK, a complicated system in terms of options and what you could actually have. And when I had specced it up in full and got to a price, it was the same money, almost to like to almost the pound, as my Toyota GR Supra. Now what's interesting about that to me is that I do honestly think it's quite a lot more car than the Supra. It's, it, I mean, it's more powerful, but that's interesting. A bit of the blow off sound. <laughs> burning as I go because it's much more premium inside it's much faster 0 to 100 kilometers an hour 62 miles per hour in this car is quoted at 3.9 and I did less than 3.9 in pouring rain with one so that means it is fast it is really really fast and it drives pretty well and you've got the switchable rear wheel drive sorry not rear wheel drive drift mode where it changes the torque distribution it doesn't go rear wheel drive it just changes the setup to allow you basically to chuck it around completely fully then if you put it into individual or change any of the modes you know you can open the exhaust put it into the, the sport handling mode you can set this all up exactly how you like you get a lot more pops and snaps out of it <laughs> I mean, it's a raucous hot hatch, right? That's exactly what this thing is supposed to be. They've made it into a car that is just entertaining to drive while being so usable for everything as well. A five-seater with a hatchback with four-wheel drive. What more do you really want? Anyway, let's head further up and go, uh, go and explore. I've already been driving enough to figure that this car is going to be monumentally quick. We will go down here where the road opens up a little bit more. But one other thing I've noticed about it is that depending what you do, for example, with the downshift, you get completely different crackles and pops and bangs, different sounds pretty much every time. But here, yeah, I mean, I'm not even anything like foot flat, and I can tell that this is a very potent little machine. This is almost definition of pocket rocket. And even when you do throw it into a corner, it's actually quite good as well. Goodness me. Yeah, this is, this is, this is nippy, this is brisk inside at least it sounds good the shift sounds are cool as well those snaps that you get wow that's a lot of power from such a little car obviously being small and nimble hot hatch style go-kart style means that it's obviously very easy to place very easy to drive it is unreal how quick these kind of cars have got how a car like this I mean it's about 55,000 pounds in the UK for a very high specification example 
I mean, this would beat supercars of only five to ten years ago, not even more. I mean, off the line, this must be quicker, or at least kind of as quick as my SLS Black Series almost, which is moderately scary to think about, actually. I mean, it's just, it's just such a brilliant all-round car. This is one of the things I slightly kind of regret about not going for it, is the fact that it is a magnificent little machine. I just don't have the full use for it in my lineup. I mean, for short daily drives, I take the G63 for local kind of errands and things, the practical stuff. For longer drives, I'm using the GTRs. You know, the GTR Roadster will very much be a car I use for most purposes. The SLS, I mean, I've done like 8,000 kilometers, 5,000 miles in about seven or eight weeks in the SLS. That car is seeing a lot of mileage. So again, like daily driving usage, um, which is where this kind of comes in and makes me think, what, what would I, what would I personally do with it? And that's why I've held off, and that's why I never firmed or locked up an order, because I couldn't work out where it would fit. Now inside here, obviously, you've got all the different modes and settings like you have in its big brothers. It's amazing how much this has from the cars that cost, you know, triple the price in terms of the steer. It's the same steering wheel in terms of the same controls. This actually has a better infotainment than the GTR Pro, which was 190,000 um, pounds. I mean, that's, that's the kind of level of this. Yes, okay, it's not quite the same finishing with materials on the dashboard uh, and on the door, top rolls of the door cards and those kind of things. But you do still have some lovely Dynamica in here. It's a really, really nice place to be. And it's well equipped in terms of technology as well, I think pretty much uh, an, an even match. So this is, this is the di dilemma, right? This is what I thought when I drove it the first time. And yes, there's been a bit of backwards and forwards about the car. Some people love it, some people hate it. Maybe it's designed to appeal more to the newer generation buying and driving these cars. But it's just absolutely ballistic point and shoot and the brakes feel nice as well, downhill braking. And in terms of A to B cars, I'm not sure much would ever get down country lanes faster than this does. If that's, yeah, just, just not possible. And then the other thing it does so ridiculously, on an empty road, just come to a stop for a moment. We're in drive. ESP in sport, foot on the brake and the throttle, race start, go. Oh, instant traction. And that's 100. I mean, well, 98 kilometers an hour. Just like that. Isn't it ridiculous how quick this thing goes? Like, <laughs> family hatch, easy to drive, anybody can get behind the wheel, and yet it can be like that. And it can do the drifting, and it can be very fast around something like the Nürburgring. I mean, it's insane. It's genuinely insane. This is one of those cars that has been a bit splitting of opinion. People have had different outcomes from driving it, different experiences, because it does things in slightly different ways. But I love how quickly you can get back on the power out of a hairpin. And it takes off. Inside, though, I am going to say this, the sound inside here is actually quite loud. It is, like, you have to shout over it when you're under, under full throttle, because, well, it's, it's a noisy little thing, and even the completely stock car, that was already the case. You've got all those crackles going on behind you. I just find it amazing how on every corner you just keep your foot down, and the power, the power is just mega. The power is there instantly. You know, slow down through a corner, get back on the power. Not a problem at all. Not a problem, even through a hairpin. We're coming up to another hairpin in just a moment. It's planted, it's nice. Okay, maybe the steering isn't exactly on the same league as, say, the GTR Pro. You know, it's not that level of completely planted, proper sports car. But it's a hot hatch, and it's a brilliant hot hatch. It's an absolutely brilliant little thing. I, I, I personally don't agree with the people who don't like it, because I do think it is so good. Those brakes are great. But then back on the power nice and early. It's ballistic, it's absolutely ballistic. As we come up then towards a little tunnel, window down just for a moment, drop some gears. You can hear more of the sound from the outside, although I tell you what, when it gets warmer, it doesn't pop and crackle as much. That's really interesting. It changes again, I think I said a little bit earlier how you get these different sounds out of it, the way the downshift is not predictable, it doesn't have this massively predictable pop 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 every time you shift. It's sometimes loads, it's sometimes more of a, a kind of a machine gun type sound, sometimes it's a one-off kind of bang. And that's more that's more interesting to drive, more kind of exciting as we now head down the Nürburgring Boulevard back at a 
the kind of HQ of the Nürburgring GP track heading towards Rentex base on the Moispath Industrial Estate near uh, the Nürburgring here. So, yeah, enjoy driving this, but I wanna go open up this box and see some of these parts for the SLS. With the A45S parked back up alongside the GTR Pro, I suppose it's a glimpse of what could have been in the garage. It might still happen at some point in the future, just not right now. But with them like this, one thing I do quite like about the AMGs to an extent is the use of the Panamericana front grille that was introduced with the AMG GTR, having those vertical slats like the old style grills and now carries through to other models, whether it's the A45S, also on my G63. But it does, I guess, get slightly diluted when it's used on so many cars like the A35s and the E53s for example he says it's a pretty cool AMG GTR just casually cruises by here at Rentec, Rentec obviously lots going on so yes I enjoyed that drive but let's go inside because like I said there is a package we need to go and check out as I head upstairs towards the storage have a quick look at that view how cool is this so at the top left we've got the GTR Pro that has the new carbon boot that we saw recently down there we've got another GTR Pro that is the E63 R as it's nicknamed I think there's another AMG GTR that was just outside and that is the car that went round the green hell the other day doing the full lap not the BTG that we saw in 7.00.0 with Manuel Metzger at the wheel now the interesting thing about that is that's actually a lap record for an AMG GT the factory GTR Pro had done it in 7.04 that was about five seconds quicker very very cool so let's head up here then where I know the box is awaiting we can come straight to take a look at what we've got in here which we will go through in more detail but the headers we've got the sports cats we've got other parts that are all going to be going into my sls black series i'm not going to unpackage it all now we'll save that for some time in the future but i'm glad this has arrived it had to be manufactured being a slightly older part and it's going to be making my car an absolute beast and another gtr joins the family here inside it's always fun and games it has just been absolutely crazy out here. I came back out to have another look at the A45S and everything has been happening at exactly the same time. He says, as an Aventador SVJ Roadster crawls around the roundabout behind me. How cool is that? That's just Nürburgring things, followed by a hurricane spider. As you do. There we go. That's exactly what's going on here. But this is a bit, I guess, of a, a behind the scenes when I'm making some of these videos. I came back out and there were people coming, people leaving. You might remember that earlier there was a trailer just here, like this one, another articulated trailer. The truck came, they had to connect it up to collect that and take it away. As soon as that was done, a low loader truck came to collect another car. Basically, it's just been all at once, all completely crazy. I tell you what though, we've got these two back together. That was an awesome drive. But by way of a conclusion for now, I'm afraid to say that there isn't a plan at the moment for an A45S to join the garage. I will transfer my deposit over to the GTR Roadster because I'm effectively choosing, I guess, to keep the G63, to keep the GTR Pro and to add the GTR Roadster as well, which I feel very lucky to do. This is crazy in terms of the AMGs. It's a pinch moment big time, but it does mean that for now, at least, there isn't a spot for the A45. But I think you know, from an AMG front, it's not that there's any reason I don't like this car. I absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic thing to drive and I really appreciate it that Rentec let me take the keys out today to go and enjoy it as well. So I'm afraid to say my A45S is not going to be happening for the time being. This one will be staying with Rentec. I've enjoyed the car though and I do recommend anybody that is thinking about one of these do try it. It's, it's fantastic. It's really, really cool. For now though, I've got a lot coming up, a busy, busy period ahead, but thank you very much for watching. As always guys, that is it for this time and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.